Hello, my name is Leilito. Welcome to this video where what we're going to do is take a look at how we can export 3D tracking data from Adobe After Effects into uh, 3ds Max. Now, this is useful if, say, for example, you would like to use a custom model or if you'd like to use, say, for example, something like the V-Ray rendering system, which may, uh, which may yield a much better uh, rendering uh, results than what is offered within Adobe After Effects. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, there are two things that we need before we begin uh, creating our project. Number one is obviously we'll need some video that we're going to be using to track. And so I've simply just gone ahead and um, created a video with uh, my iPhone. The second thing is you need is a, a plugin called AE3D. So if I just jump over to the web browser over here, you can see that we have AE3D export. Simply just go to Google, type in AE export, and the first link that will appear will bring you to this web page, and you can just go ahead and download this um, from this forum here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First things first is we wanna go ahead and import our video footage. So let's go ahead and right click, go ahead and choose import, file. We're gonna go and jump over to my desktop. And I have this video file here, and it's gonna go ahead and choose import. From here, we can go ahead and left click and drag and create a new composition. And what that's gonna do is gonna go ahead and place the video on the timeline. Now at this point, we need to do two things. Number one is we need to go ahead and export this video into a JPEG sequence. So when we import that into Max, we get a uh, accurate representation of our rendering process. And then we need to go and also create the tracking data. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the JPEG sequence first. So to do that, we're gonna go over to um, the composition. We're gonna go ahead and choose add to render queue. And from the render queue, let's go over to the output. We're gonna click the lossless output here, and we wanna go ahead and choose JPEG sequence. We're gonna go ahead and press okay. Next to that, we wanna go over to the output over in the right-hand side. And let's just jump over to my desktop. I'm gonna right click, create a new folder. I'm gonna call this video underscore out. So let's try that again. If I can type that is. There we go, video out, go ahead and open this up and there we go let's delete this i don't know why this is in here and go ahead and press save oops looks like we can't save let's try that again there we go so once we've done that we can go ahead and click the render button and what will happen is adobe after effects will go ahead and render each frame um, to a jpeg sequence so let's just go ahead and pause the video and i'll see you once that has completed all right, so we've gone ahead and exported our sequence. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and create our track. So let's jump back over to our composition here and we're gonna go over to animations and choose track camera. Now, when we do this, what's gonna happen is Adobe After Effects is gonna go ahead and look at each frame and it's gonna try and track a variety of different pixels on the screen and then it's gonna go ahead and create a virtual camera. Um, once we have that virtual camera and that null object, we can then export that into 3ds Max and set it up for uh, the purposes of rendering. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause this video and I'll see you once Adobe After Effects has finished. Alright, so Adobe After Effects has finished um, making its analysis and what we can see here is uh, many of these different points and what these points represent is how Adobe After Effects has determined the perspective of the camera here. So you can see here where these bushes are, um, it looks as if the uh, planar face is at the right direction and on the floor, it looks like the uh, planar direction is also in the correct orientation. So what that means is that as we scroll through here, we're gonna see these tracking points remain on screen until they're no longer tracked and we'll see new tracking points appear as uh, they are required. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and select these tracking points along the bottom. So I'm just left clicking and creating a marquee selection here. And once that's done, if we let go, you can see that we now have this virtual plane. And what we need to do is right click on any one of these points and go ahead and choose create null and camera. What that has done has gone ahead and create a null and camera over here on the left hand side of our composition panel. And we can go ahead and select both of them. Go ahead and choose file. I'm going to go ahead and choose scripts. At this point, we're going to go ahead and choose the AE 3D export. And under the options, we want to go ahead and make sure that this is a one-to-one -one scale. So let's go ahead and move this to the right-hand side, press close. We want to go ahead and choose the export um, to and choose the correct option. In our particular case, we're going to be using 
2ds Max, and we can go ahead and give this a name. So I'm going to call this Camera Track. And we can go ahead and press export. Now, if you try to click the browse to choose the location, um, in this, this particular script doesn't really work um, with choosing the location to save. So that's okay. Just go ahead and press export. And it's going to go ahead and save a mic, a um, a 3ds max script file to the desktop so let's jump over into 3ds max here let's go over to scripting and we're going to choose run script desktop and we're going to go ahead and choose this camera track so once we've done that we're going to get this camera track in 3ds max but unfortunately it's in the um, wrong orientation so we're going to jump over to the left uh, viewport let's go ahead and maximize that view let's go ahead and select the camera and the um the dummy here so in Adobe After Effects, this is named a null in 3ds Max. Uh, the technical term inside 3ds Max is a dummy. So let's go ahead and select both of these and we're going to go ahead and choose group and just go ahead and group these. And what we can do now is go ahead and rotate this. So what we're looking to do here is to rotate this so the bottom of the dummy here is flat, but then we want to place it so it's in the center of the world. Now, the reason for that is that the uh, center for the uh, or, or the position of the ground is actually in the center of this dummy so it's not at the bottom it's actually running through the center here so we want to try and line this up best possible so let's go ahead and choose the front view and let's go ahead and move this into position we may want to also rotate that just slightly something like this front and let's go ahead and check the top view so again we need to go ahead and rotate this to something like so and then we can go ahead and move this into position so let's just have a look at this. So this looks to be about right. Um, it's not 100% perfect. If you want to, you can go ahead and spend your time and make sure that this um, this dummy is 100% in the center. But um, for the purpose of the tutorial, we're not gonna go ahead and get into um, making it super accurate for now. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and look at the, uh, the concepts and principles behind what it is um, we're looking at today. Now, if I go to the to the camera view by pressing the C and I scroll through my timeline, you can see that the camera has been tracked properly. We even get that nice um, shaky effect that we have from our camera. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and set up the background. So in order to do that, let's go up to view. We're gonna go ahead and choose uh, viewport background, configure viewport background, and let's go ahead and choose use files. We're going to go ahead and choose map uh, match bitmap. Let's go ahead and choose file. We're going to go to my desktop. We're going to go to video out, and I'm going to go ahead and select this first frame. We want to make sure this option down here is selected that says sequence, and then we can go ahead and choose open. Now, at this point, it's going to ask us, do you want to alter the um, the amount of frames in which we have on our timeline? We're going to go ahead and press OK. We're going to go ahead and choose apply to active view and press OK. Now, if we scroll through our timeline, we can see that. Um, the camera is moving, but the the actual image, the background image is not moving. In order to fix that, what we need to do is we need to go to Customize, Preferences, and under Viewports, we want to make sure we have this option here that says Update Background um, While Playing. Let's go ahead and uncheck and check that again and see if we get an update. And it looks like that's not updating, so let's just continue with the tutorial and uh, we'll fix that. Um, in a moment. So let's go ahead and press the M key and let's go ahead and choose rendering environment and we want to place the background sequence into the rendering environment also. So let's go ahead and choose bitmap, desktop, video out and let's go ahead and bring this in. Make sure again that this is a sequence. Press OK and go ahead and click and drag this into an empty material slot. Make sure it's set to instance. Under the environment, we want to make sure this is set to screen. So what this does is when we render, we get the correct perspective of uh, the image. Now, if this is set back to spherical, when we render this, what we're going to get. So you see, we're going to get an inaccurate mapping of the environment here. So let's go ahead and set this back to spherical. Okay. Now, as we scroll through, yeah, we're still not getting an update. Okay. So let's go ahead and fix that issue right now. So let's go back to the view, viewport background, configure viewport background, and let's check this option that says animated background. Hopefully that should make a difference. Okay, so now we have the uh, background animating. 
So this is just going to help us when it comes to uh, compositing our video here. Now, once we've done that, we basically have everything set up and ready to go. So now what we can do is we can import a bunch of models and um, start to render them out. So in this example, we're just going to create a simple box, but I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and render those out properly. So first of all, what we need to do is go ahead and create a plane. Okay. And this plane is going to represent the floor. I'm going to press the F3 key so I can see the plane. And let's go ahead and create a box. Now, I'm just going to create something really simple here. And let's give this like equal size, like eight by eight by eight or something like this. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to render and uh, see what's going on here. Now, first of all, we need to go ahead and set this ground to be a matte background. So let's go ahead and press the M key to bring up the materials editor. Let's go ahead and select an empty material. We're going to go ahead and choose standard and we're going to go ahead and choose this option that says matte shadow and we can go ahead and apply this. We want to make sure that the receive shadows is enabled. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a material for our box. So let's go ahead and make this, I don't know, gray. Maybe give this some specular highlight or something. I don't know, really it's up to you what you want to do with the model. At this point, you could go ahead and import a car or something a little more complicated. Okay, I'm just going to convert this one as well poly and I'm just going to add some uh, edges to this just so we can capture. Uh, some that they know it looks like this has many edges here, so I'm just going to remove these. And let's go ahead and choose chamfer. Let's give this like two or something. Okay, this is going to help us um, sell the lighting here. Now, if we go ahead and choose render and render, this is what we're going to get. We're just going to get our plain block box here. There's no shadow or anything like that. So Let's go ahead and add a basic light. So let's go ahead and choose standard lights and let's go ahead and choose to bring in a skylight and let's make the skylight slightly blue to represent the color of the sky. We're going to go ahead and turn on the shadows and we want to go ahead and simulate, uh, let's see the direction of the actual shadows. So we can go ahead and bring in a light. And let's go ahead and make this slightly orange to better suit the overall color of the scene here. Press C. Let's go ahead and choose render. Now you can see that it takes a, little, a few moments here just to render. But you can see that now we have our box in the scene and the shadows are, are tend to be following the correct direction here. So it looks like the angle of the light is a little bit too steep. So let's go ahead and make this so it's more of a, so it's more over the uh, box here and we can go ahead and choose render again. You see, as we did that, we're now getting this nice reflection of the light on the edge here, just helps sell the illusion that this is actually in the scene. Now we can go ahead at this point and tweak the shadows and we could use maybe something like V-Ray to make it um, look more realistic, but for now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to render the sequence out and then we can bring this into Adobe After Effects. So let's go to render, render setup, and let me just go ahead and select the skylight here for a moment and just check the settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ray per sample down to about five. This should enable us to have a much quicker render. So let's just check that out. There we go. So that also decreases the quality, but for the purposes of the tutorial, that's okay. Let's go to render settings. Let's go ahead and set this to HDTV, 1920 by 1080. So it matches the resolution of our video footage. We need to go ahead and choose environment and we can disable the environment map. And next we can go ahead and choose files. I'm gonna go ahead and choose desktop and make a new folder, call this box. And let's call this box underscore sq for sequence we want to go ahead and make sure this is set to tagger and yep that should be pretty good we're going to press save we to make sure we have the bitmap uh, selected here now what we also want to do is we want to go 
up here we want to set the range and we want to make the range match the uh, the furthest point in which we can no longer see this box so for me it's going to be maybe let's just find the correct one here one hundred maybe oh 120 I think is gonna be pretty good nope a little further I think we're gonna go with around 140 so we're gonna set the range here to 140 okay just double check this yep yeah, okay and once we've done that we can go ahead and press render now what's gonna happen is the 3ds max is now gonna go ahead and render each image if we go ahead and check the alpha you can see that we're also rendering the alpha and we can also see that we get this um, dispersed appearance this is just really down to the quality of the render we could uh, remedy that by changing some settings but for the present the story is going to be um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and we're going to wait for this to finish all right so Max has uh, finished in uh, rendering out our images here so let's go ahead and jump back into Adobe Premiere and uh, let's import that sequence. So let's go back to our main composition and uh, let's just go over here, there we go. Right click, go ahead and choose import, choose file. We're gonna go ahead and choose the desktop and we wanna go and select the output, which was box. And we go ahead and select the first image here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose import. We wanna make sure that we choose this third option here that says, um, frame multiplied for uh, matted with color. What that's gonna do is gonna make sure that the alpha is imported um, correctly and we're gonna go ahead and press okay. And once that happens, we can go ahead and drag this onto our timeline. And there we have it. We have our box in our rendered scene here. Now, at this point, we could go ahead and do a, a whole bunch of different things. We can go ahead and uh, color correct this. Um, we may even want to, if we'd like to, go ahead and render these um, these uh, 3D objects into multiple passes. For example, just the box and just the shadow on its own, which will allow us to have control over the opacity of the shadow and, and so on and so forth. But for now, this is the basic idea of how we would get a object into our scene. I'm just going to go ahead and press the space bar here so it loads into the RAM player. And let's go ahead and play this folder so you can see how that worked. Well, that is it for this uh, tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you would like to see uh, more tutorials like this that are sort of separate away from um, pure 3D and pure games. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, until next time, bye bye.